So thank you all for joining me today. My name is Olga Barsukov. I am a small business advocate with the Office of Small Business Assistance. I have Greg McAllister assisting me today. Greg is also a small business advocate. You may hear him chime in now and then throughout the, the presentation. Hello, everyone. Our office helps small businesses with regulatory issues with government agencies. We also help businesses understand regulatory requirements and provide resources. At the uh, but, but sorry, there's a button on many government agencies' websites. It's that need help button um, right there. If you click on it, it will take you to a web form. If you complete that web form, it's gonna just ask for basic information. A small business advocate will follow up with you. You can also get a hold of us toll free at 844-469-5512 or email us at business.sos at oregon.gov. You can also visit our website at www.oregon.gov forward slash small business. We have many resources on our website. Today's presentation will be broken down into two parts. Part one will cover business license and then we'll move into part two, home occupations. So what is a business license? Business licenses are issued by the local government. If you're operating in the city, you would wanna go through your city to obtain a business license. If you're outside of the city limits, you'd go through your county. And if you're just not sure which jurisdiction you fall under, just contact either one and they'll get you to the right person. A business allows an individual or a company to conduct business within that government's jurisdiction. There isn't one business license that's going to cover you for the entire state of Oregon. There's a common misconception with new businesses that if you register with the Secretary of State, that's the same thing as obtaining a business license. And these are two separate things. Registering your business allows you to use that business name or create a separate entity. Your business re registry information is public record. So this also allows the public to know who they're doing business with. Each city and county has their own requirements for doing business in their area. So you might find that some cities may only require a business license for cer certain types of businesses, and some cities might not require one at all. So there are two driving factors when determining who the governing body or agency is, where you will be operating and what you will be doing. You can think of a business license like a flat tax for operating with, within that city or county's jurisdiction, jurisdiction. And each city and county has their own requirements and process for obtaining a license. There may be additional permits that you might need to obtain, um, or there might be unique different types of city codes that you'll need to adhere to based on the nature of your business. An example of this also is home occupations, and we will be going over that in more detail in the second part of our presentation. If your business activity or product is regulated, you might also need to obtain a license through the board or a state agency to perform that type of work or sell a product. It's important to understand that a single jurisdiction might require multiple licenses that are issued by multiple state agencies. An example of this is a restaurant. You would not only need to check in with your city to see if a business license is required, but you would also need to get a food establishment license through the County Environmental Health Department. And if you're serving alcohol, you might need to get a license through the Oregon Liquor Control Commission. So that's multiple agencies all governing the same area. I wanna provide a couple of examples of how each city operates differently. The city of Salem, for example, they don't necessarily require uh, businesses to obtain a license, only certain types of businesses. So here's a list that we've pulled from their website it's important if you are operating in the city of Salem that you check in with them and take a look at their most current information. I didn't pull all of their information from their website. 
They also have standards for other business activities. An example of that is if you started a business and it's near a sidewalk and you were doing some sort of sidewalk sales or if you have a cafe along the street, you are required to keep the area clean and maintain the walkways and buffers so people are allowed to use that walkway as it's intended. Another example, Multnomah County, they are much different than the way the city of Salem works. Multnomah County, um, if you, for example, if you're operating in Gresham, Troutdale, Wood Village, or Fairview, all of those cities require business licenses, but the city of Portland does not. Instead, they have a business registry. The city of Portland's revenue division administers business taxes for Portland and all of Multnomah County. So anyone conducting business in Multnomah County also needs to register with Portland's revenue division. That means if you're operating in Gresham, you need to obtain a business license through Gresham and register with Portland's Revenue Division because you are operating in Multnomah County. And I also provided the link at the bottom of this page in case you need additional information. So when you are starting a business, the best place to start is contacting the local city or county that you plan to operate in. It can be difficult navigating the government websites and trying to find exactly what you're looking for. Often the easiest thing to do is just to give them a call, provide them with what your plans are, and they will provide you additional information about what the requirements are to operate in their city. If there isn't a list in, listing for business license departments, you can also contact their planning department. We also have a license directory on the Business Express page the, link, the web address is listed here. This directory is a really great tool. You can use keywords and search. Um, based off of those keywords, you'll get a result of different licenses that might be uh, associated to the work that you're doing. You can review the different results you get and then contact those gov governing bodies to get additional information. It is the responsibility of the governing body to keep the information updated on this license directory, but often information do, does get outdated. So it's always important to follow up with that governing body or that agency and find out what the most current information is and what the most current requirements are in order for you to do that type of work. Lastly, you may contact our office. We are a free service. We can provide you with information about requirements for starting up a business, the licenses related to the type of work you're planning on doing. And if we don't know the answer, we'll get you to the agency that does. Here's our contact information again. We have a very small team, it's just four of us. If you call our toll-free number, you will most likely get uh, to a live person immediately. We don't have long wait times. And if for some reason you are needing to leave a message, we usually return calls within a few hours at the most. Thank you all for joining me today. Now I'll be taking questions if you have any. You can either use the little chat bubble on your menu there or you can unmute and ask a question. All right, so it doesn't look like we have any questions. Great. We will now begin the second part of our presentation, home occupation. A home occupation permit is essentially where the city is allowing you or giving you permission to use your home for business purposes. The home needs to be primarily used for residential purposes. And to apply for a permit, the business owner actually needs to be the resident of the property. So you can't allow another business to operate from your own home. Each city and county has their own requirements for operating a home occupation and the process for obtaining a permit. Some cities might not require a permit as long as you adhere to their municipal codes, and some home occupations may also require a business license. 
Here are some examples of what you may see in the city codes regarding home occupations. They're most likely going to have requirements around business signage. They're going to have limitations on the customers or employees traveling inside, in and out of the home. They're going to have limitations around deliveries, equipment and storage, parking and traffic re restrictions, and noise level limitations. They may also have restrictions on the type of home occupations. And an example of this is some cities might prohibit auto repair businesses as a home occupation just because they know that these types of occupations already generate noise. They require large um, equipment or you're going to most likely need to alter your home in order to operate. Even if the city doesn't necessarily state that you cannot have an auto repair business from your home, they may still have many requirements or restrictions in place that will make it very difficult for you to operate an auto repair shop from your home. You might also find that some cities have home occupations broken down into types or levels based on the level of business activity. And here's some examples, but again, this outline does not, uh, not all cities go by this outline. This is very general information. So some cities might have at the lowest level where you, you don't have any employees, there's little to no traffic. Um, this would be for artists like, or sorry, occupations like artists, where the work is done by themselves, there isn't any traffic or anything like that. This will be your type A or type one. Most likely you're not going to require you're not going to be required to complete an application or obtain a permit. And then you see there's a little bit more increase in activity, your type B or type two. There will be limitations on the number of employees. There's going to be limitations around the number of customers that can come and go. And of course the noise level as well. And then if there's increased activity, a lot more activity you'll have your type C or type three, will most likely have some sort of like zoning or plan review and an inspection from the zoning staff. Uh, this might require a notice to neighbors to inform them of the type of business activity you plan to do and the regulations and requirements that you need to operate under. And I want to provide again an example of some different cities and how they operate or what their requirements are for home occupation. The city of Salem, they do not have an application or an approval process for home occupations. They have certain standards that they require uh, home occupations to operate under. They have limitations around the number of employees. They have structural limitations. They don't want you to alter your home and give it an appearance that a business is operating from the home. They have vehicle and parking limitations. They do not want any sort of hazard or excessive congestion in the area. Uh, there are, um, they, they do not want you to create any sort of public or private nuisance. So creating loud noises, any odors coming from your business, that's going to disturb your neighbors. You can find a complete list of their requirements again on the City of Salem's website. It's important that you check in with the city if you do plan on having a home occupation to make sure that you understand completely what the requirements are. And the City of, Sa city of Portland, they as you can see, break it down by levels. They have a type A where no employees or customers can come to the site. This does not require an application or permit. And again, that would be something like a consultant where maybe they do all of their work online. And then they have a type B where you can have customers come and go as long as it's between the hours of 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. They only allow eight customers or clients visit, visiting per day. They do require a neighborhood notice to make sure your neighbors are aware of the business operations and the requirements that you need to adhere to. And this does require a permit and inspection to make sure that you are in compliant and the regulations are being met. And to 
uh, access additional information, please visit their website listed below. So when you are ready to start a business from your home, the best place to start is by looking up the city that you plan to operate or the county you plan to operate and review those city codes. You can type in uh, the search engine, something like home occupations with the city and state, most likely that will bring you straight to their website. If you cannot find the information you're looking for, just give them a call. You want to search for listings under city's planning, the city's planning or zoning department. And if you're still not able to find the information that you need, you may contact our office and we'll be more than happy to help you locate that information. Again, it is a free service. Here's how you can get in touch with our office if you need to write this information down. You can give us a call at 844-469-5512 or you can email us directly at business.sos.oregon.gov.